And Patty just stuck in traffic on one. <coughs> Amen. So today, who, who anybody do their devotional today? Okay. It says, I am carnally minded. Where there, where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal? The natural man or unbeliever knows nothing about carnality. The desires of the flesh warring against the spirit and the spirit warring against the flesh, which began at rebirth, are what produces carnality and the awareness of it. But Paul said, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh in Galatians 5.16. In other words, carnality will disappear. Are you quarrelsome and easily upset over small things? Oh, what? Yeah, I was talking to some people right there. Are you quarrelsome yeah. and easily upset over small things? Yeah. Do you think that no one who is a Christian is ever like that? Paul said they are. And he connected these attitudes with carnality. Is there a truth in the Bible that instantly awakens a spirit of malice or resentment in you? If so, that is proof that you're still carnal. If the process of sanctification is continuing in your life, there will be no trace of that kind of spirit remaining. Sometimes we'll read something in the Bible, we'll read a truth in the Bible, and, and it will cut like it's supposed to. It's a double-edged sword, so it's supposed to cut. And when it cuts, we'll, we'll, we'll get upset. Um, we'll, we'll not want to accept that, that particular truth. Um, amen. We'll want to make excuses. Uh, because, and that's just carnality. That's just us thinking with our natural man. In the spirit of, if the Spirit of God detects anything in you that is wrong, he doesn't ask you to make it right. He only asks you to accept the light of truth. And then he will make it right. Let me let me read let me read that again because I don't think we all quite got that. Um, a lot of us will will uh, try to fix ourselves. We'll try to correct our own behavior, amen. And it's not about us correcting our own behavior. That's your good works. Um, and if and and the Bible says that your good works is like filthy rags. So I don't want no filthy rags. What we need to do is come back into agreement with God and agreeing with God about a certain thing, whatever the matter is, and then he'll fix it. Uh, amen. If the spirit of God detects anything in you that is wrong, he doesn't ask you to make it right. He only asks you to accept the light of truth and then he will make it right. Right. The child of the light will confess sin instantly and stand completely open before God. But a child of the darkness will say, oh, I can explain that. Have, how many times have you ever tried to explain your sin? Mm -hmm. uh, amen. Well, that just, yeah. that, that just shows where your, your mind is at. Your, your, your thinking um, is influenced by the darkness. Oh, okay. It says, when the light shines and the spirit brings conviction of sin, be a child of the light. Confess your wrongdoing, and God will deal with it. If, however, you try to vindicate yourself and you prove yourself to be a child of darkness, one of the reasons why David was such a uh, was was so loved by God wasn't because he was so good. It wasn't because he was a, an upright man. It, it was it was because he when once he realized that he had sinned against God, he was the first one on his face before God. He was Amen. the first one to say, oh, Lord, I, I, I messed Amen. up. I am so sorry. Amen. Amen. He still took whatever punishment was coming. Amen. Yes. Because there was, there was still, there was still, um, you know, like Eddie Murphy says, you know, there's still consequences of repercussion. Amen. Um, so the consequences of repercussion of the things we do uh, in the natural, because, you know, like I've taught you before, every single thing that you do, whether right, wrong, or indifferent, has it's a seed and it has a harvest there's going to be a fruit associated with whatever whatever we do amen and if we vindicate ourselves if we try to vindicate ourselves um then there's going to be a fruit associated with that 
if we just repent of it, there's still going to be a fruit associated with the sin that we did or whatever it is that, that we were out of line with. Um, there's still going to be that fruit. Like, for example, in, in David's, uh, you know, David had, you know, some pretty heavy consequences when he, uh, when he uh, you know, took Bathsheba and killed her husband. And, um, you know, there were some pretty heavy consequences, but he, he repented before God and any, cons- any eternal consequences was gone. A- amen. Amen. He was forgiven Amen. by God, but yet there were still consequences in the earth. Amen. Uh, Amen. Are, are you following this? Amen. Amen. So it's a it's a matter. Let me get my thing back here. Every time it turns out, it, it loses. Uh, it, it's it's a matter of coming into agreement with God and letting Him do letting Him do the work. Amen. Yes. Amen. Um, the proof of con, con, uh, uh, what is the proof? The carnality is gone. Never deceive yourself. When carnality is gone, you will know it. It is, it is the most real thing you can imagine. And God will see it or see to it that you have a number of opportunities to prove to yourself the miracle of his grace. I want to read that again. He will, God, and God will see to it that you have a number of opportunities to prove to yourself. Uh-huh. Not to him. A lot of people think that we get tested by God um, so that God will see where we're at. No. God knows everything. He knows where you're at. Amen. We don't know where we're at. That's right. That's Amen. Right. So Amen. the tests are the tests come our way to show us where we're at. Where we're at. That's right. Amen. Amen. Um, not that we're bad people, but they 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 come to show us where we're at. And we're gonna be talking about that tonight too. Um, a little bit. Amen. From a different angle. God will see to it. You have a number of opportunities to prove to yourself, not to him, but to yourself, the miracle of his grace. The proof is in a very practical test. You will find yourself saying, if this had happened before, I would have had the spirit of resentment. And you will never cease to be the most amazed person on earth at what God has done for you on the inside. Amen. So, so, as, as we progress in the things of God, he begins to, he, he'll give us a test to, to show us as we, as he, as he shows us the things that, that we need help with, as he shows us those things and we acknowledge them before God, we don't make excuses for him. So, well, you know, I did that because so-and-so did this. I did that because, well, I had to God, I, you know, but you know, we don't make excuses and we just acknowledge, just, just, just own it. Just own it. I messed up, Lord. Um, then he will come in and he will begin to change you. He will begin to change your character. As long as you make excuses for the, the shortcomings, as long as you make excuses to live in the lower, uh, in the lower mind, the lower mindset, amen, in the, in, in the, in the Adamic realm, uh, as long as you make excuses to do that, you'll never see into into the Eden. You'll never see into the garden. You'll never see into the kingdom. Um, amen. Because right. you're making yeah. too many excuses on why right. you should get away with, with thinking from the lower mindset mm-hmm. instead of coming up, coming up to the higher mindset, to the higher level of thinking. Amen. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, that was, Hey, Pastor Jan. Amen. amen. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, then we just move right along then. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. amen. So I, wanted, I really wanted to get into this last week too, this conflict part. But we're learning about the authority of the authority that we have in the kingdom. The authority that we have in the kingdom is not our authority. It's an authority that was that was delegated to us. Amen. And so there's certain there's certain things that we have to that we have to understand with it. Amen. Um, that it comes through righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It comes through the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, his righteousness, he is our righteousness. Peace, he is our peace. Joy, he is our joy. Amen. In the, in Amen. the, in the presence of God, there's a fullness of joy. Amen. But this Amen. is found in the Holy Spirit. So the authority is found in the Holy Spirit. Kingdom is found in the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. 
So we can take that out and say the kingdom of God is in the Holy Ghost. All right. Well, I'm just, that was, that was better than the response I got. So, okay. I got one yeah, amen, huh? but you know, I bought her dinner. So. <laughs> amen, butter. Amen. Okay. So, so, and then last week, uh, what did we learn last week? Let me back up a little bit. Last week, we were talking about the growth that it's always about growing. It's never about retreating. It's never about staying the same. If you decide you're going to stay the same um, and not grow and become stagnant, uh, God will raise up someone else uh, to do what he's asked you to do. That's right. Oh, we don't like to hear that. But now we're going to come into this part of conflict. Um, you know, we, we don't like to hear about conflict, but conflict is conflict is the is the Conflict is how we grow. I don't know if I said that right. I'm going to try it again. It's through the conflict. It's through the pain that we suffer, those things that we suffer. The Bible says that Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. Yes. Now, Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. And he was God. What about us? You think we're not going to suffer to learn obedience? Yeah. Every one of you mothers out there, you can vouch for me. You want to turn on your mic and tell me about it. You can. That's okay. Um, whenever you had that baby, much conflict was there. Much pain was there. Much, much enduring was there. But once that baby, once that baby came, um, all that was like set aside for the joy of, of what was there. Amen. The joy of that baby. Amen. 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 And it's the Amen. same thing in the things of God. God will bring us through these places of conflict. Okay. Um, he'll bring us through these places of conflict. Now he doesn't bring us conflict, but he brings us to the conflict. Oh, come on. Who led, who led Jesus up into the wilderness to be tempted by the Holy, to be tempted by the, the enemy? Holy it was Holy Spirit. Spirit did. Holy yeah. Spirit led, led Jesus into the wilderness. So if he's going to lead Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the, by the evil one, um, he's going to, you know, that tells me that he's also uh, going to lead us into the conflict that we need, into the pressure that we need. Conflict doesn't mean that we're fighting. It simply means a pressure. Okay, so he's going to lead us to that place of pressure, that place of pressing that's going to press out the, the things of God that are in us that we don't want to let out. Amen. Um, Acts 14, 22, it says uh, uh, they strengthen the disciples and encourage them uh, to remain true to the faith. Because we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Uh, when the, when uh, uh, the, the apostles had started a church in this place, they had ordained elders, and then they prayed for them. They said, look, we're, we're encouraging you. Um, you're going to go through some stuff, but stay true to the faith. A lot of times, uh, back when I was first saved, back in the 80s, um, I didn't know this truth. And so when I began to, I began to experience the conflict, uh, you know, every time you're on a high, every time you, you've got a victory, there's something going to happen. Amen. The enemy is going to answer that. Um, there's something going to happen. And if, if we don't understand this truth, we may get knocked down. We may get, we may get knocked off, knocked off the horse for lack of a better term. Um, amen. Uh, the pressure is only to bring out the anointing that the that God has put in you through the victory that you had. You can't be a victor if you haven't gone through some trials. Amen. That's right. Uh, amen. That's right. You, you can't be a conqueror if you've never had a fight. That's right. Okay. So amen. if we're going to be more than conquerors, and if we're going to be victorious, then we're going to have to go through some things. That's right. But the Amen. things that we go through aren't meant to destroy us. The things that we go through are meant to bring the anointing out, to, to, bring, to bring the fullness of God in and to bring the anointing out. When we got saved, when we got born again and said, Lord, come into my life, then the fullness of Christ came in. You, you, you're not get, ever going to get any more of him than you got that day. The problem is you're still in the way. I'm still in the way. 
Amen. So the things that we go through aren't necessarily to put more of him in us. It's to get us out of the way. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's a pressing. Amen. You don't get the wine right. without pressing the grapes. There you go. You don't get the oil without pressing the olive. There you go. Are, are, are you following me? So Amen. we have to go through some hardships uh, to enter into the kingdom. When you, when you, uh, I remember that uh, uh, after, after certain <coughs> victories, shall we say, uh, certain kind of highs, um, that's when the enemy comes at you the hardest. Amen. Uh, before Amen. I knew this truth, um, I would I would really get confused and, and be like, well, what's what's up with this, man? I mean, shoot, yesterday I was doing great. And now all of a sudden I'm getting my butt kicked. Um, I'm sorry. Um, backside kicked. OK. Um, and and it, but if I would have known this truth, I would have been able to hold fast and go. I see you. I recognize you. I know what's going on here. That's right. Are, are you following me? So we need to know this. Amen. We got to remember that the enemy sneaks up on us like that, too. He does. He does. He does. He Constantly. Does. Constantly. He does. He does. Amen. He comes to us after we've had a victory, after we come down off the That's high. Right. He you know, we right got peaks and valleys. We're yep. on a peak. He's not there on the peak because he, he's a, he's a, he, he, he works in the valley. That's right. He's just and after we come out the peak. peak, then we're on our way back down to the valley. We come right. back down into where he's at. That's right. Amen. That's you know, good. Elder, That's good. Elder, Elder Jerry, I have this yes. saying on my on my wall that my mother made for me, and it's like an impressionistic uh, picture of a boat a boat on water. And there's a saying over it, and it says, "Smooth seas never made an experienced sailor." I like that. Yeah, I like I that. Too. I like that. That's a good I like that. Yeah, you're gonna have to like uh, make copies of that and give them to everybody. Amen. I can do that. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Tina. No, I know you. Amen. Are. Um, Matthew five it says, "Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven." The kingdom of heaven isn't dying and going to a place in the sky and playing harps, walking on clouds. The kingdom of heaven is coming into an understanding of the government of God in this realm. Jesus said, I, 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 come, I come to bring, uh, to seek and save that which was lost. He said that which was lost, not those that were lost. He said, I came to seek and save that which was lost. And that was that that connection to the kingdom, amen. I like to think of it as like an Ethernet cable, right? Anybody got a anybody got an Ethernet cable in your house? You plug that thing into your uh, into your Wi-Fi, and now you've got you've got a connection all over the house, amen. You unplug that Ethernet, and now you don't have connection anymore. Now you're not connected. Oh well, thanks. I have one of those. I didn't know what it's for. Okay. Glad I could help with that. I, you know, amen. On the, yeah. Take another but word sorry, squad. Learning, learning more than just Jesus in the Bible. Study. Well, you know, I do what I can. So, <laughs> so, so the Ethernet cable is, is that's just kind of what I, I like to think of. He, Jesus came to plug us back in to God. Amen. Amen. He came yes, to plug us back into God. Remember, Adam yes, was plugged into God. Adam had had a had a direct line to God. Thought Amen. like him the whole the whole bit. Adam had that whole direct line to God in the garden. Yeah. yeah. Adam messed up, lost his yeah. direct direct connection. Amen. No longer had the Ethernet. Amen. So now he had to operate on what he remembered. Uh, just this is kind of going going this direction for right now. Anybody ever lost lost internet in your house? Yeah. Oh yeah. We did just last yeah. week. We had an outage here. Um, I think it was Monday or no, yeah. it was Sunday because I couldn't go to church. Yeah. Anyway, so so we had it. We had it. We we when, when there's an outage, you can't get on the internet and learn. Okay. Amen. Amen. You have to go by what you already know. 
You can't learn anything new. You can't gain more instruction. Mm -hmm. You have to go by what you already know. And sometimes what we think we know, we don't really know. We don't know what we know. Okay. Sometimes we think we have it, but we're not, we're not quite. Amen. Anybody yeah. ever been there? Oh, Amen. yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. Yes. My hands and my oh, yeah. feet are up. Oh, yeah. yeah. The whole bit, right? Well, when Jesus came, he plugged us back into the mind of God. He said, he said, let this mind be in you. Mm -hmm. The mind which was in Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, being in the form of God, thought it not uh, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, yet humbled himself even to the cross. Amen. Mm -hmm. He Amen. said, let this mind be. So you, if he said, let this mind be in you, that means that you can prevent that mind from being in you. The, the kingdom mindset is more than just, it's, it's more than just, uh, it's, it's more than just being good to go somewhere someday. Amen. It's, it's operating in a whole, in a whole new realm of, of understanding and in a whole new realm of principles and, and guidelines. Amen. It's operating under a whole new set of laws. Uh, amen. In the Old Testament, how many times did you have people praying for other people to get healed? Um, they did it, but they were like the, the prophets did it. Okay. Um, but in the New Testament, Jesus said, uh, he who believes. So it's whosoever will. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. They didn't have that in the Old Testament. They didn't. They didn't have that before the kingdom was plugged back in. But see, now the kingdom is plugged back in. We have this newfound authority, but now we have to understand how to use it. Too many people will take the kingdom and try to use it to benefit themselves. They'll right. try to use it to, to right. build their, their ministry. They'll try to build a, right. their kingdom and not, not dealing with God's yes. kingdom. Um, Amen. And, That's and, right. Amen. And, and this, is, this has gone on way too long, way too widespread. And it's caused all kind of confusion. And now right. there's what forty five thousand denominations. Yeah, forty five thousand different wow. groups of people saying how to interpret this book. Wow, forty worldwide. I think I don't know how many of those are in America, but forty five thousand worldwide, as Google said. So, don't blame me if it's wrong. Google. So it must be Google. right because Google said it. Google said it. <laughs> and, and so if it's playing. wrong, don't just blame Google. I'm just taking Google, Google's word for it. The Google Bible. Right. The Google. <laughs> right. Yeah, but the point, the point is, you've got forty-five thousand different groups of people saying that right. you can operate in the kingdom, or you know that the kingdom means this, or the kingdom means that. Uh, Jesus said, "The kingdom is within you." Within you. And it's in a demonstration. We we talked about that the kingdom is being demonstrated that we when we when we release healing to someone, or when we cast the demon out of someone, this is the releasing of the kingdom. The kingdom has come. He's, Jesus said to the Pharisees that were that were accusing him uh, falsely, uh, they were accusing him of casting out the devils by the spirit of Beelzebub. Okay. Um, and, and he said, well, if I'm casting them out by the spirit of Beelzebub, who are your sons going to be casting them out by? Uh -huh. Because your sons are going to believe in this stuff. Your sons are going to get, get in the groove of this. And now you're going to say that they're also demonic. He says, if I'm casting them out, he said, but I'm telling you this, when, when that spirit comes out, when people get healed, Know that the kingdom is at hand. Amen. That's the kingdom being demonstrated Amen. to you. When Amen. I first got saved, I wasn't saved yet, and God, God met me where I was, and he healed me. He told me what was wrong with me. I didn't know what was wrong. I knew something was wrong. I didn't know what. And he told me what was wrong with me, and he healed me. Um, and I wasn't even saved yet. I had not, I had not said yes to Jesus. I was, I was kind of dipping my toe in the water. Right. Uh -huh. I was just kind of going there, check things out. Checking the water. Yeah. Exactly. Checking the water. And and amen. So so the, the kingdom was delivered to me. I don't know if I want to say that, but but the kingdom was was shown to me. 
Are you following me? Amen. It was demonstrated. So the Amen. kingdom of God is not about talk. It's about demonstration. Amen. Anybody can talk. Anybody can, anybody can talk. What are we going to do? Got to walk the talk. We got to walk the talk and we have to deliver the kingdom. Amen. Amen. So it's not just about, you know, spouting off. Um, it's about, it's about walking in some deliverance, walking in some healing. Amen. I had a sister call me up not that long ago. Um, and, and you could tell her countenance was completely off from what she's normally like. Um, and come to find out she picked up a spirit. So we, we prayed and we cast that thing out over the phone. I'd never cast the devil out over the phone before. Cast him out, but never over the phone. That was a first for me. Um, and you could hear in her voice that that thing was gone. Uh-huh. Amen. You could hear it that, you know, and she even said, man, she just, you know, she felt it lift off her. So there's no excuse. So if you're in a wheelchair, if you're, if you're bound at home, there's no excuse. We can still pray for the healing. We can still bring deliverance. You know, in the salvation, uh, that word salvation in the New Testament is the, is the word sozo. And it, and it speaks of your reconciliation to God, right. your healing, right. and your deliverance. Amen. All of these, one word, one time when it says you're saved, that's what it's saying. You've been, you've been, you've been reconciled to God, you've been healed, and you've been set free. Praise God. Amen. It's Praise all God. together. You don't have to wait for anything. Glory well, to I'm God. reconciled Glory to God. God. Now I'm waiting on my healing. No, your healing is there now. We just have to yes. take it. Take it. Remember, the kingdom of yeah. God suffers violence, but the violent take, take it. it by force. By the force. Take it. That's Amen. mine. I'm healed. Amen. I'm delivered. Are, are, are you following me? Amen. Amen. Um, amen. Let's just cruise. Hallelujah. So conflict is good. I, I don't know why we got off there. I guess uh, I guess somebody needed it. Somebody needed it. Somebody needed it. Yeah. Maybe it was me. Maybe I needed it. Amen. And me too. I'm saying amen. me too. <laughs> amen. So Jesus never promised us an easy ride. In fact, one of the things he did promise. Um, as did the Apostle, uh, Apostle Paul, is conflict and trials. Uh, remember, Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. Um, it, it, this should not discourage us, because without a conflict, you cannot have a victory. We kind of talked about that already. Without going through a trial, you cannot be an overcomer. But God has promised us that we are both overcomers and victors, in, the, in all that comes against us. So Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. Amen. That scripture used to make me mad. Because I'd be in a place where I'm needing some help. And then I'm, I'm reading this scripture. Holy Ghost, bring me to this scripture. Jesus, you know, Jesus overcame. I'm like, well, good for you. I'm happy you overcame. I'm still, I'm still down here dealing with this earthly stuff and, you know, getting my feet dirty and I need some help. But it was there all along because what I didn't understand then, I understand now that we aren't here on our own. We're not left like orphans. It says in Colossians that you've been hidden with Christ in God. So you and I are already with Christ. So if he is overcome and you're in him, you've overcome. Amen. You've Ooh, overcome. Brother, brother, brother. Are, are, are you hearing this thing? If you're yeah. in him and he's overcome, then his victory wow. is yours. Wow. His victory is yours. So yeah. who are we going to believe? Are we going to believe the Bible? Are we going to believe the Bible that says that his victory is mine? When the battle is his, the victory is ours. Come on now. Come on now. Amen. They made a song out of that. The victory Come on. Is mine when the battle is alone. Hosanna, Hosanna. That's a, that, that'll date you right there. That's an old song. So, so the victory is already yours, but the problem is we look at the situation that we're in and we begin to believe it. 
We're going right back to today's devotion. All right now. Okay. We begin All to right. believe the situation that we're in. And, and, right. and now and now we begin to act upon that because faith, everybody has faith. I don't care who you are. Everybody has faith. Everybody acts on faith. Faith is a verb. It's not a, it's not a passive thing. If you believe something, you act on that something that you believe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, says, faith is a substance of things hoped for. That Amen. word substance it, it is the word hypostasis, and it means faith is it means coming up under, uh, coming up under the authority of. So faith is coming up under the authority of the thing hoped for, and the hope just pull out your Webster's dictionary. Hope means expect. So faith is coming under the authority of the thing you expect. So when we see things in the natural, and we react to those things in the natural. We're expecting the things in the natural. Amen. Before we were saved, that's the only thing we could do. That's right. That's right. That's, that's right. the only thing we could do. That's right. And, and we're so used to doing that after we've been doing that for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah. Um, amen. That, that we, just, we just naturally kind of go to that. You develop an ungodly habit. Right, is an ungodly habit, right? But it, it, but God says, Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I've overcome. Right, you overcome. So yes. I got to go through this battle. Jesus had he overcame. If I'm in Jesus, then I've already overcome. Who am I going to believe? <laughs> Whose report shall we believe? Here the you report go. of the Here Lord or the report Amen. of Lord. Man. Amen. Amen. So we have to, we have to, and that's part of the kingdom, y'all, is we have to understand that, that, that we're not in this on our own, that, he, that, he's, that he's brought us through this already. I know we don't look like it's brought us through us all. Uh, look like, it doesn't look to us like he's brought, it, brought us through it, but he has because in his eyes, it, everything's finished. That's right. It's already, he done. Come to, he it's already done. We're just kind right. of walking it out now. Right. Amen. So, right. so when we choose to believe what he said mm -hmm. and act upon that, mm -hmm. he said, I'm a victor. Right. My mama said, I'm a Jerry, but he said, I'm a victor. <laughs> I'm <Amen>. kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. He's, he said, I'm victorious. Yes, he did. So this battle that I'm going through, I already have the victory That's right. because he said, won. be of good cheer because I've, I have already overcome. Amen. Amen. So the battle that I'm going through, I can believe the battle or I can believe the victory. Ooh, that oh. was good. That was good. Kind of like what's going on in Ukraine. The Ukrainian people they can believe the battle um, because it looks like a giant is coming at them. Um, but but y'all, those those folks are holding on. They yeah. are. Yes. They are yes. holding on. That's right. They're like a little wildcat. They're a you know? David. They're like David, right? David and Goliath. Exactly. Amen. Because they're holding on to something that the opponent doesn't have. Amen. Oh, okay. Amen. 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 Jesus never promises an easy ride. Oh, I think I already, we already did this, huh? Okay. So what's that? Oh, the kingdom is unstoppable. In Hebrews 12, uh, it says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. Now, here's something that we really need to talk about. Amen. We're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We need to re we need to worship God with reverence and in awe. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Too much matter of factness. Uh, maybe that's not the right word. <coughs> Unreverence. If that's a word, it will be tonight. Um, too many times we don't reverence God. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
We and take it for granted. Way that you come into the presence of a king. We take it for granted. Right. There's a certain way that you come in the presence of a king. That's uh, you right. You don't just you don't just you know jump out in the presence of a king. Look at Esther, uh, which I think is like the next scripture, right? So look at Esther. Um, when when Esther was Esther was the king's wife, and even she couldn't come into the presence of the she was the queen, and she couldn't come into the presence of the king without an invitation. Hey, right. Okay. Well, we'll just that was the thank you, Gene. Um, right. You know what? I remember. I remember at one time it was said. That when Clinton first got into the White House, he did something, and his wife didn't like, like it, and she went after him. And the Secret <laughs> Service men, they got in between and said, no, you can't touch him. He's the president. Well, he's my husband. Blah, 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 blah. We don't care. He's the president of the United States. We're protecting him, even from right. you. Right. And then they and and they they just got in between him and her and pushed her back. <laughs> right you couldn't penetrate yeah i don't know what it was he did but you know i don't know yeah he was she got mad at him but she went yeah. after him <laughs> and they got in between him and her and christopher beck said no this is the president of the united states you can't be doing that yeah and he's not even a king right he's, he's an elected right. official he's an elected right exactly he's an elected official chosen by the people supposedly um chosen by the people he's an elected official he's not a king and especially not god uh, amen. amen. So amen. we have to get back to a place where in our heart we're, we're reverencing God. That's right. Reverencing God and, and seeing him with this awe, this awestruck wonder. Amen. Uh, a, amen. Too many amen. times we, we don't do that and we, we just, you know, there's, there's an irreverent expectation on what we want God to do for us. And then the next thing you know, we're like, you know, spouting off like he's our butler. Um, and and he's he's not our butler. He came he's not the he, butler. That's right. He's not our butler. He he's God. Butler. He's Amen. God. He's the creator of all things. Amen. He's the one, he's the lifter of your head. He's the one who keeps you, who keeps you in the dark times. He's the one Come on, who brother. Come on. answers Come on. you in the hard times. Come on. He's, the, he's the one that feeds you in a in a famine. He's the one that gives you drink in a drought. He's the one that put some gas in your car too, you know. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, the gas drought. There'd be a gas <laughs> drought going on right now. Amen. Uh, or a or a petroleum uh, uh, famine. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's exactly what it is. Exactly Amen. He strengthens your body, be able to go to work and take care of business and do and do. He's the one that strengthens you to to go and and to release the kingdom into the into the into the the masses. The needed. And when I say masses, I mean one person, one person at a time, y'all. We don't have to go preach to 100,000 people. Just that one person at the cooler, that That's one right. person at, uh, at the break room in, at, at work, that, that one on. person in the classroom. Come on, uh, come on. Are, are you talking? Are, are, are you understand what I'm saying here? It's that one person that we can just release the kingdom to. You know, I, my wife and I, we like to go to the mall and do what we call a prayer walk. Now, this prayer walk, we're not going around the wall praying, you know, you know, with signs, you know, nothing like that. We just go in there and we just, you know, we just kind of walk around looking for people that look like they're in pain. Amen. And, amen. Um, amen. And, and when we see someone that's in pain, release the kingdom. Amen. What I mean is release that, that healing. Amen. Amen. To release the kingdom into their life, to demonstrate God mm -hmm. to them. There you go. Uh, amen. amen. Um, and it's and it's real. We did it over Christmas, and and you know some really cool stuff happened. You know some really cool stuff. We're sitting uh, we're sitting in this one area, this kind of a lounge area in the mall, um, which was anyway. So we're sitting there, and we just we just prayed before we came in, and and we hadn't been sitting there five minutes. Yeah, and, and we asked the Lord to bring them to us. She she she's reminding me. She's reminding me. We asked the Lord, I'm sorry, honey. So, she, so, so we asked the Lord to bring him to us. So we're sitting in this lounge area. We hadn't been there five minutes. Uh, we hadn't fin we hadn't even started on our coffee yet. I don't, I don't think, because I was letting mine cool down, right? And, uh, and this guy comes walking up, sat right on the seat right across from me, and we started talking. He said that he had, his back was hurting him. He said he heard it. He said he hurt his back 30 years prior 
but it had well. never bothered him until that day. Hmm. Well, you know why it's bothering you today. He said, no, I don't. I, I don't know why. I said, well, because God sent me in here so that you won't have a back problem anymore. Because God wants to heal you. Are, are you following Amen. me? And it's just that Amen. simple. Then you just pray for him. Amen. Just release the kingdom. It's just that simple. Yes. He came to me. I didn't go find him. There you go. You made yourself available. Right. It's for the Lord to use you. you it's exactly right, Gene. You just have to be available and willing without, you know, without the pride, without, uh, without the, the fear, because, you know, those thoughts are going to come through your head. Well, what if it doesn't work? What if, it, what if nothing happens? If it don't work, it's all right. Cause well, you if don't you do don't anything. do anything, nothing's going to happen. <clears throat> That's right. So if, you, if you're worried that nothing's going to happen um, and you don't want nothing to happen, but you want something to happen, well, you have to do something. Are, does that make sense? Yeah. If you do nothing, then what you're afraid of happening will happen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. <laughs> so reverence and awe. Amen. And in yeah. Matthew 24, it says, and this is, and, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. It doesn't say that the gospel of salvation will be preached in the whole kingdom, in the whole world. It says that this gospel of the kingdom. And I've been saved for, for a long time. Um, and even as a kid, I w I'm not going to say I was saved as a kid, but I was around the things of God to a point as a kid. Um, and, and it was always about you got to die to go to heaven. You got to die to go to heaven. You, you, you die to get in the kingdom. The kingdom of God is in heaven and you walk on the streets of gold and, you know, you're playing a harp, uh, you know, or as a violin, you're playing a harp um, on the clouds, Right. Uh, but that's not the kingdom at all. That's the, that's the gospel of salvation. We've been preaching the gospel of salvation and calling it the gospel of the kingdom for as long as I can remember. But just in the past few years, probably the last 10 years, maybe, the gospel of the kingdom has really been being flooded out. Has anybody else noticed that other than me? Because if you were watching, uh, if you were watching, TV preachers or listen to other preachers, you know, they uh, 10, 15 years ago, they weren't teaching kingdom. That's right. They were That's teaching right. salvation. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Okay. But now you turn on the TV, everybody's talking about kingdom. That's right. Some of them understand it. Some yep. of them don't. Right. But they're trying yeah. to understand it. And they're right. using their platform to at least try to get what they do or they think they do understand out. Uh, amen. So the gospel of the kingdom is being preached, and it's being preached all over the world. Jesus said that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached all over the world. Amen. And then the end will come. Yes. Anybody yeah. want a sign of the end times? <laughs> this gospel of the kingdom, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, what, we need to do, what we need to do as recipients of the preaching of it, is begin Amen. to apply it into our lives, begin to receive this gospel. Now, we're not going to understand everything all at once, but what right. we do understand, we begin to apply, we begin to do those things that we do understand, and, and then we see the fruit of it, and now that we see the fruit of it, now we have greater faith in it, and we can step out and do more. Well said, well Amen. said. Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. I, remember, I remember some years ago, um, I, had to, I had what I called the, the headache anointing, right? Um, and it started out with just you know, like my own headache, and then I'd be praying for other people's headaches. And, and the more that I prayed for people's headaches, uh, it seemed like every time I prayed for somebody's headache, the headache went away. And that built my faith to the point to where, to where I'm looking for a headache. I'm not, let, let me find somebody with a headache. Amen. So we Amen. can release this kingdom into them. I didn't there know that go. that's what it was happening. I didn't know <laughs> I was releasing kingdom. Amen. I'm just looking for somebody with a headache so I can show them that God's real. Amen. That's right. Amen. So that I can tell them about who God is. Amen. Because if I go to tell them about who God is and they got a <laughs> headache, they're not going to listen to me. They're going to be looking for a Tylenol. 
Come on now. Uh, does that make sense? Straight makes a lot of sense. G Jesus fed the he fed the people. And then he preached to them. They're not going to hear what he's got to say unless they see, uh, you know, unless, unless he takes care. If, he, if we see, if they see that he loves them, if they see his love, then they're going to hear his voice. They're going to stay there and write. They're going to stay there and listen. Amen. Otherwise, they're going to be looking for McDonald's. Uh-oh. <laughs> Amen. Uh -oh. Back in a box or, you know, they're looking for a fish fillet somewhere. Jesus brought his own Amen. fish fillet. Amen. Amen. Well, he, he stole that little kid's lunch. <laughs> Amen. So this Amen. kingdom is unstoppable. And we have to understand that the kingdom is bigger than any individual or ministry. We are all handpicked and highly valued, but no one is indispensable. I'm going I'm to read that again. Because sometimes we get this idea that, you know, God needs me. No, he doesn't need anyone. Because the kingdom is bigger than any individual or ministry. And we are all handpicked and highly valued, but no one is indispensable. If we do not fulfill our part in his kingdom, God will raise up someone else. That's right. Yes. One thing is certain, God's kingdom purpose will prevail and will fill the whole earth. Amen. The message of the kingdom will fill the whole earth. The glory of God will touch everybody. He's, he's got an assignment for you. He's got an assignment for me. If we sit Amen. around on our hands and, and let the day go by and not fulfill the assignment, he'll raise up somebody else to go fulfill yes. that assignment. And then he'll he'll require it of you. Say, why didn't you why didn't you do what I asked you to do? Why didn't you fulfill that assignment? What did you do with the talents that I gave you? Uh -oh. You buried them in a can. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. You buried them in a can, and you didn't do uh -oh. anything with it. Well, are, you, are you following me? The parable of the of the talents. That's right. There you go. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. In Esther 4, uh, 4, 4.14, it says, if you remain completely silent yes. at yes. this time, uh, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews. This is a time when, when uh, Esther was, was, she was the queen. She had just married the king and she was the queen. Um, and, and she wanted to approach the king and her Mordecai, her, her, her dad, I think it was, um, he also wanted her to approach the king. But she kind of had some some uh, there was there was some resistance because you don't approach the king without an invitation. Amen. That's okay. Right. Um, and that Amen. was there was there was a law there that uh, if you did approach the king, even the queen approached the king without that invitation, uh, you could be killed. That's right. You could be killed. That's right. Um, and that's why we have to be sure that we're reverencing God. Amen. Amen. But. Watch this. This is relief. And if you if you be silent in this time, that the children of Israel, they need you to speak out. They need you to take this message to the king so that they can be delivered, so that they can be healed, so that so that so that so that the, the deliverance that God wants for them will be delivered to them. Does that make sense? He says, if you remain completely silent at this time, if you sit on your hands and you don't do anything, if you don't go out and try to try to feed the poor, if you don't go out and 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 just to talk to people and 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 pray for them and 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 bring deliverance, uh, you can bring deliverance to the street, y'all. Amen. Oh, come on, go amen. for a mall, go for a mall prayer walk with me. Come on down, we'll we'll go. Uh, yeah. Amen. Or you could do one yourself right there where you is. Go put some gas in your car. Amen. You well, okay, then you can do one yourself right there where you is. <laughs> right. Amen. Just walk Amen. around your neighborhood. Amen. These people walking their dog. Do it before it gets hot, right? Um, there's people out there walking their dog or whatever. Uh, I I know um, there there was a there was there was a time I was I was walking around looking for people to pray for. And, uh, and, and people were like, you know, holding this one lady, I was going into a restaurant, going to get me some lunch. 
as one lady came out and she was like, you know, acting like her leg was hurt. And I was like, what's wrong with your leg? She goes, oh, it's your old age. I'm like, well, let's pray, you know. Um, are, are you following me? So opportunities arise in your day-to-day goings forth. Amen. You don't have to go, you know, the Bible says, I can't remember the exact scripture. I don't remember exactly where it's at, but Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel yeah. to all nations. Yes. Amen. Amen. Everybody thinks that the operative word is go. <laughs> Not. Nah. If you look up that word, it means as you go. As you go. As you go into all the world. It's assumed you're going to go get some lunch. It's assumed that you're going to go to the bank. It's assumed that you're going to, you know, hit Safeway at some point in the month. Okay? As you go into all the world. Amen. Preach the gospel. Amen. Release the kingdom. Pray for people. Are are, are you following me? Make disciples. Yep. Are, are, are you following? Amen. Yeah. You know, several yeah, I times. Can't make I, a disciple. Sure, you can, because you know time. more than a person that doesn't know anything. Amen. Several times I've gone to the fast food, get a little hamburger. Right. And some guy will come come up to you and say, Hey, man, you got a joint? I, I, you know, I said, No, but I got Jesus. Got better than a joint. I got, yeah, yeah. I got Jesus. Oh, man. Come on, man. Come on. Man. I said, No, let me pray for you. Like, I'll yeah, buy yeah. you a hamburger. I'll, let me pray for you and I'll buy you a hamburger. They'll go for that. Yeah, yeah. Pray for him and give him a hamburger. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Big Bob used to do the same thing. I don't know if you, I don't know if you remember him or not. Some of you that have been around Golden Altar for a while will remember um, the the guy that used to bring a busload of homeless people every Sunday. He'd go pick them up, oh, and wow. he would take them. He would take them to hometown buffet. And the whole thing was, he would go and he would he would he would offer he bribe them with a breakfast at hometown buffet. So we go buy everybody breakfast. Wow. Listen, but the one catch is you got to go to church with me after that. So <laughs> he'd come in with a, with a whole bunch of well-fed, um, donkeys. How many people were hiring a, you know, hiring a kite, man. Um, <laughs> amen. So, I mean, if you got to bribe them, you got to bribe them, right? Yeah, that's right. I'll, I'll buy you lunch. Let me sit down and talk to you while I'm buying you lunch. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Amen. As you go in your everyday goings, bring the kingdom. But we can't Amen. sit on our hands anymore. The time is getting too close, y'all. It's getting too close. Jesus said that Jesus said that when this gospel is preached in all the world, when the gospel of the kingdom is preached in all the world, then the end will come. Y'all, the gospel of the kingdom is going out into all the world. Yes, sir. It is going out into all the world. Amen. You don't have time to sit around on your hands. That's right. Pastor Cal is a, is a, is a proof of that right now. Pastor Cal is a proof of that. He's Amen. going around the world. Amen. Going around the world, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. 192 Amen. nations. Amen. Amen. To every, every, every nation. Amen. Amen. It says, if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. That's right. But you and your father's house will perish. Amen. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I don't want that to be said about me. I want it to be said about me that I was in this, I was in this place for such a time as this. I heard that. For such a time as this. I don't want to be sitting on my hands and not doing anything. Amen. Are you are you are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't want to be sitting around and not doing anything. We have to get out there and start talking to people. And and it's not about it's not about setting up big meetings and talking to a big group of people. I mean, if you've got that, if you've got that, go for it. I'm not I'm not discouraging that. Yeah. Um, but just because we don't uh, doesn't mean anything. We're, we talk to one person here, one person there. Yeah. You go to the doctor, you talk to that one. You go get a haircut, you talk to that one. You know, are you following me? You shouldn't go anywhere that they don't know that you're that you're safe, that they Amen. don't know that you're a Christian. They may not Amen. understand what it's all about, and they That's may right. regret seeing you come in because Amen. you're always talking about Jesus, and they're like, I don't want to hear it, you know. Um, but that's okay. I didn't want to hear it for many years too, and then one day I did. Right. So right. you know, 
I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with them not liking me coming in. He, Jesus said that they hate you for my name's sake. That's right. That's a good thing. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 So I'd rather them hate me for uh for uh giving them an opportunity to know and, who it, God is. Exactly. And <laughs> and then and then when I stand before when I stand before God, um, I can say, Well, I I, I tried. That's I'm right. Yeah, I tried. Hey, there it is. That's okay. right. Amen. Amen. I, Amen. I presented it to them. They they didn't want it. Amen. 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 Does this making any sense to anybody? Amen. We've got yeah. to do it. Um, otherwise, somebody else. Amen. Um, but the gospel will go out. God's plan will be done. Do you want to be part of it? I do. Romans 14 says, it is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me and every tongue will confess to God. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. If we're sitting on our hands, uh-oh, uh-oh. If we're sitting on our hands, we're not doing uh -oh. anything. Uh-oh. If we're not doing anything, if we're not taking ground, Jesus said, occupy till I come. If I oh, yeah. mean just sit around, it means take ground. If you're going to, Russia is trying to occupy Ukraine. They're yep. trying to take ground. They're not just going in there and, you know, sitting there having uh, tea and crumpets, um, watching Mori Povich and, you know, that's not what they're doing. They're that's trying over. to take ground. Mm -hmm. That's right. Are you following me? Yeah. Amen. Jesus said to occupy until I come. That's right. So if we're occupying our lazy boy and the remote control, and, and, and I'll confess, I do way more of that than I should, okay? Um, but if we're, if we're occupying nothing, what do we expect? Oh. Every tongue will confess. Every tongue will confess. I want to be a part of that. Amen. That will be a sight to see. Well, it will be. It will, it be, a will be a sight to see. We have time to go into the next one. Yeah, we don't have time to go into the next one, although I think the next one is the last one. Okay, we'll just wait till next week for the next one because we really don't have a lot of time. So, any questions, any like comments, any, you know, we got some higher ups on here, Pastor Harold, Pastor Mike, um, Pastor Pastor Janice, um, Maria, all these higher ups, Ms. Wallace. Well, I have, I have a comment to make. And as you were talking about, we need to be out there, the kingdom. Uh, as we teach the kingdom, the kingdom um, is, is, is here, releasing it. Right. Um, and we need to be doing it now. I'm kind of paraphrasing a little bit of what you right. said. Um, but I don't know about anybody else, but for myself, I've been sensing this urgency for uh, the last, I don't know, a couple of months. It's like, but there's an urgency to do yes. this. Yes. And I'm just wondering, is anybody else sensing that? Is yes. That yes. 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 Time yes. is running out. Yes. yes. Yes, time is running out. Yeah. I think, I think everybody's sensing it. Everybody's sensing that urgency because we're, we're coming to the end. You know, some people say the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. The world will go on without end. Yes. But it's the end of this age. Yeah, um, it's coming and it's coming very, very, very soon. Very soon. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It, can I say something? Come on. You know, um, I've been my nephew, he's nine, he's been having issues lately. And my sister called me and she didn't, you know, she don't know what to do. And so I've been praying for my family and I've been praying for my nephew. And when I called today to check on him, he he kind of th he threw me off. He said, Ain't he D? When you come, when you come over, can you baptize me, please? 
I was like, baptize you? I'm like, what you mean, baby? And he was like, I'm ready to be baptized in the water. Amen. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. And I said, well, did you accept Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior? He said, yes. I said, you believe he rose from the dead after three days? He said, yes. And it kind of threw, it just threw me back. Like even the children, you know, cause I've been having talks with him about the kingdom and, you know, um, getting out of the world. Cause he was struggling with music and stuff like that. You know, worldly rap music and things like yeah, that. But yeah, it just man. threw me off. Like I couldn't believe yeah. he said that to me. And it reminded me on how precious this, this gift of salvation is. And it doesn't even matter your age. God is, mm-hmm. he's calling, you know, he's calling people unto, in, unto repentance. Amen. And if we model our life Amen. right before our unsaved family and friends, the ones that receive, you know, whatever God is, you know, Holy Spirit drawing them, they will, they're, they're going to come in. And, and even my sister, like her views are changing because I've been talking with her and, and praying for her. So I was just like, wow. That's good. Amen. That's how good Amen. God is. He loves us that much. That's he don't right. want nobody to perish. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's encouraging. That is encouraging. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You know, he put a gift in each in each and every one of us. He put he put his Holy Spirit in each and every one of us. Yes, he did. If you said if you said yes to Jesus, if you surrendered to him, he put his spirit in you. Yeah. Amen. His spirit wants to get out. His spirit wants to get out and touch someone else. Amen. He's, watch this. He touched you through somebody else being obedient to that. Amen. He touched Amen. me through other people being obedient to the spirit in them. Amen. Oh. And he okay. touched you the same way. Amen. Holy Spirit is in you. He wants to get out. You going to say something, Harold? Yeah, I was going to just say is that on the the last part of that, you know, that going to all nations, it said goes on to say teaching them to observe. Correct. You know? And so that observation is, you know, your lifestyle that you now want to pattern yourself after the Son of God, so that now they'll see some kind of light. Because there's many a times that, you know, uh, I guess sometimes we, in our walk, we really don't know how much of the Lord is really in us. But as we now begin to go out into the world, like we're in the marketplaces and those different places, people begin to look at things and they begin to see you and they perceive, you know, specific things. And they say, you know, uh, something about you, brother, you know, that when you're around us, you know, there's. You know, I don't know what it is, but, you know, I, I, I don't see since the need, you know, to um, to act up or to act out like they're used to uh-huh. and different things like that. Because I can remember, you know, like recently, uh, a lot of folks don't know that I recently went up and and uh, did the service for my brother. And then doing that, you know, sometimes, you know, we as a family, we're going through a lot of turmoil that's there. So before I went, I was praying. I said, Lord. You know, if anything comes up and arise, you know, arises and not of you, Lord, um, give me the, you know, uh, ability to shut it down. And so when those things did come, uh, I didn't have to raise my voice or anything of that status. I just said, Amen. You know, we need to just move on, you know, Amen. with that. I say, because, you know, we didn't come up here, you know, to argue and stuff. And I say that. Uh, what I was learning in the word of God is that the kingdom of God is us having the ability to now lift the people up and to be able to take them out of the places that they were in Amen. to give them hope in a hopeless situation, because there's a lot of folks that, you know, live in specific areas and they use all kinds of different excuses because of the way they live their life. And they, you know, give up on specific things, but we're there, you know, to be able to let them know that there is a life that you can live that will now give you hope. There's a life that you can live that you can be successful in your life 
I said, you just have to be able now to choose, you know, the right path that's there. And so, you know, they were able to receive that and uh, God, you know, showed up in that, that situation. And I think that, you know, as the sons of God are released, you know, I'm talking about mature sons that are released, right. that the people will now begin to see, you know, what the kingdom of God is all about, because you won't have to, you know, come with lip service. Like Paul said, I come not with swandering words of men's doctrine, but I come in the power and the demonstration of the spirit. Yeah, so as exactly. we come in that power and that demonstration of the spirit, the people will begin to see the love. And so the people that are walking in hatred and stuff, and I'm going to stop at this one last thing. In the, uh, the movie called uh, the, um, about um, the hurricane, Reuben Hurricane Carter said one thing, and he had been in jail for like 22 years. He said, hatred got me into this place. He said, but love is going to bust me out. And so that's what we have to, you know, do. I believe that the light of love that's in the heart of the sons of God will melt the hearts of those who are going through all this turmoil. Amen. Bust them out of the Good. situations that they're Amen. in. Amen. And they'll come on to Christ. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Amen. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we a couple of weeks ago we talked about love. Um, yeah. And and one of the things that we learned about that is is that love is giving for the highest good. Mm -hmm. Giving to others for their highest good. Amen. Mm -hmm. Not Amen. for our highest good, not for what we feel like doing, but giving to others for their highest, to putting them before us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. What I was hearing when um, Pastor Harold was speaking was that the scripture that where the father says with loving kindness, I have drawn them. And so he was saying he didn't have to get out of character or anything. He just started sharing. He just started ministering. Yeah. And he was ministering with that love and kindness. Right. And yeah. that was why they received Amen. it. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. He didn't sit on his hands. It's 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 about showing the character of Christ. Yes. Showing the love to a world that is dying and they're lost. And we can't be mad at them because we were once them. Amen. 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 That's part of walking in the authority. We have the authority to dispense this kingdom. Yeah. Actually, we have the responsibility to dispense this kingdom. Amen. The kingdom that was assigned to him has now been assigned to us. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for a renewed vigor towards evangelism. That every day, Father, is an opportunity to evangelize. Yes, God. To speak to people and share people. Yes. Thank you, Father, for giving us your eyes to see. Yes. The hurt that's in people, the, the, the mask that is on people. People are in survival mode. They're trying to survive, Lord God. Yes, they're Lord. trying everything they can to just I make it you. through the day and survive. Uh, they're, they're, learning, they're learning survival skills as to, uh, as to uh, live in such a way uh, as to just not totally break down and not lose it. That's the, this is one of the big fears, Lord God, in the world today is that they will just lose it yeah. and lose all sense of control in their life. And God, we just thank you, Father, for the ability to see by the Spirit into the lives of people, Lord God, and have a word that comes from you, a word. We thank you, Father, for the word of wisdom. We thank you, Father, for yes. uh, the word of knowledge, Lord yes. God, that that comes, Father, to, to be imparted, to speak a word to someone, Lord that, yes, Lord, that that they know that there's no way that you could humanly understand that or know 
what was happening in their life because they don't know you and you don't know them. Yes, it came Lord. from the spirit of God. Yes. Yeah. We thank you, Father, for those quickenings, Lord, of your spirit, yes, Lord. Lord God, to see into a person's heart and have the word that comes from you, Father, that unlocks that thing. You gave us the keys, Lord. Thank you, and we thank you, Father, for the keys thank today you. to unlock Amen. people out of bondage. Yes. Open Lord. prison doors Amen. and see the captive, Father, set free. Yes, we Lord. thank you right now, Father, for a spirit of liberty, Lord God, Lord, for you yes, are Lord. setting people free, Lord, in yes, this Lord. hour. You're Hallelujah. opening blind eyes. You're causing yes, the lame Lord. to walk. You're causing yes, those Lord. that have been dead and trespassed, Ooh, yes, Lord. dead, Lord, Lord God, hallelujah, yes, Lord. to be hallelujah. loose, Lord God, and brought forth from the dead. Yes, hallelujah, Lord. Lord, those, Lord yes. God, that have been caught, Lord God. Uh, in situations, Lord, and the enemy has said there's no way out. The devil is a liar. Yes. The yes, devil is. is a liar, Lord God. He liar. speaks to people and says to them, you know what you did. There's no way out for you. You've gone too far. The devil is a liar. Amen. And Father, Amen. we just thank you, Lord God, for the anointing that sets people free. Yes, yes, thank you, Father, for that Lord word that unlocks them, Lord God. Yes, Lord. That yes, word Lord. from heaven, Lord, yes, released Lord. into their lives in the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, Lord. Give us, Hallelujah. Father, to see in the grocery store, at the gas station, Father, wherever it is, the waitress, Father, that serves us, Lord God. Yes. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for all of the opportunities. We thank you for the eye to see the opportunity yes. that is there, Lord God. Lord, A pregnant woman, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Uh, Hallelujah. Able to release a word for her. Yes, Lord. God, we just thank you today in the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. I thank you for the discipleship, God, that... <clears throat> that some are willing to come out. Some are willing to come out and engage in evangelism. Amen. Some are willing to take the microphone and speak. Mm. Some are willing to, to intercede. Some are willing to just carry a sign. I thank you for all of them, Lord. I thank you for them all, God. Thank you, Lord. Ask you, Lord, you, Lord, to touch them. Thank you, Lord. Ask you yes, to Lord. inspire them, Lord, God. Yes, Ask you Lord. to inspire them, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father, for the inspiration that comes, the unction from the Holy Ghost. Yes, yeah. Lord. We we made fools Hallelujah. of ourselves out there in the world. Yes, Lord. I'm willing to be one for you, Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Amen. You, Amen. I had like a thousand party flyers made for Golden Altar that came in today. I was excited because uh, uh, I said, "Lord, I'm ordered a thousand. If we can get one, if we can get one person come out of a hundred, uh, that would be ten people. That sounds good to me." Yeah, yeah, amen, amen, amen. yeah, yeah, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen.